Hey, so my buddy Jay came to visit with his dog Mario. Uh, he needs a mower for his mom's house. So uh, <laughs> he brought me some law enforcement nine millimeter hollow points as payment. Cool. He's my friend. I would have given it to him. Hey guys, how you doing? It's Henry at Mowers Blowers and Guns. Welcome to part three of my budget build AR-15. Uh, as you know from the previous two episodes, I bought a Palmetto Arms complete upper for um, $279. With shipping and tax, it came out to $322. In my second video, I showed you the unboxing of my OD Green Thornton FRS 15 enhanced feature list stock. Uh, I told you I was going to make videos every time I got parts for my new build. Uh, the total amount for what I paid for it so far is about $838. About $840. Bucks. But look, that's all, including the optics that I'm getting, the rifle scope with the attached red dot sight on it, right? That's like 100 bucks. I didn't have to get a Thorson stock, which is like $114, right? And then uh, I'm including the other stuff on it that, I mean, you could just, I could have just bought the upper, right? For the 322. I could have bought a $40 lower. And even if I didn't buy a $40 lower, I only paid uh, $86 for the Aero Precision M4E1 lower, right? Uh, that was only a uh, total 100 bucks, right? Then uh, we have the lower parts kit, which is, I don't know, $39, $29, right? And uh, the trigger group wasn't very expensive either. Maybe, you know, 30 40 bucks, something like that. It, here's my total right there. I lose count because I keep buying stuff, you know? Uh, I bought an ambidextrous um, safety selector too. I didn't have to buy that. So there are things that I just wanted for it, you know, that made it go to 800 if I wanted to completely build one that's uh, bottom dollar, absolute cheapest, you could have made one for 400 bucks. You know, as long as it shoots, you know what I mean? Anyway, here we go. I've got three boxes here that just came in the mail. I figured they, they all came together. Might as well just do a video. It's part three of the build. The first box is from Primary Arms. Okay, so here's a, here's a story about Primary Arms. I didn't buy this. I'll tell you what I mean when I say I didn't buy it. This was shipped to me for free. The reason behind that is this. My second rifle that I own, which is a Smith & Wesson M&P 1522 22 long rifle uh, that I bought from Primary Arms. Because that rifle was not New York State compliant, they couldn't ship it with the 30 round magazine in it because in New York, you can only have a 10 round magazine. So it shipped without a magazine. So after I received the rifle and I have a video <laughs> on how I made that non-compliant rifle New York State compliant and finally in my possession, uh, that was a whole that was a whole can of worms that I opened over there. I, uh, looking back, I probably should not have bought that rifle. I should have just made my own because I ended up I wanted to only spend five six hundred bucks for that twenty two long rifle, right? But I ended up spending uh, over eight hundred dollars because of Paying a gunsmith to get it New York State compliant, having to buy, well, I guess I now I like the Thorson stock, so I ended up buying a Thorson stock at that. But anyway, that expense was more than I bargained for, you know. But uh, anyway, getting back to the story, I know I like to go on tangents and stuff, but there's a lot of stuff to talk about. Anyway, so because Primary Arms didn't ship me a mag, I kind of felt like I was duped, you know what I mean? Hey, I paid the money. Why shouldn't I get a magazine? You know what I mean? So uh, I wrote a letter to Primary Arms, and one of the managers agreed with me. He says, we don't usually do this, but you have a point, right? So he gave me a $17.99 credit for an M&P 1522 magazine. He said, do you want the credit? Or um, do you want us to ship you the magazine when it becomes available? I said, no, I want the magazine. So when it comes available, ship it to me. It's been like two months, you know what I mean? They just don't seem to make magazines for that damn rifle, you know? It's harder to find than like DB Cooper, you know? 
So anyway, I told him, well, you know what? I'm doing a build now for another caliber rifle, 223556. I told him, can I use my 1799 credit now? Forget about that uh, M&P 1522 magazine. Send me a hex mag, OD green for a 223. So uh, they said, sure. They actually made out because while they owe me $17.99, I think the mag only costs like uh, $12 or $13.99 or something. You know? But with shipping, you know, $5 here, whatever. So I'm pretty satisfied. 10-round uh, magazine, OD Green. Hex mag. Should I open it for you? What the hell, I'm going to open it anyway, right? Why not just open it for you? Yeah. Yeah, watch me, watch me cut my finger live on video. Yeah, um, I ordered the hex mag because I kind of like the way it, it looks, you know what I mean? The OD green and also the hex design. I kind of like that, you know? Uh, I know they, they make a thousand different kinds of mags for the uh, AR-15 for 223-556, but... Uh, I figured they owed it to me. I got it for free, so I'm pretty satisfied. I think I ordered three more from uh, Optics Planet, and that's the next box. So here we have another box from Optics Planet. Um, it has the lithium battery sticker on it. You know, when you get a package from uh, that has that has batteries in it. Uh, I'm trying to think. What did I order that has batteries in it? Oh. Unless this is what the uh, the rifle scope with the three dot sight, uh, the rifle scope with the red dot sight. Oh yeah, it is. Cool. So this is an NC Star rifle scope, three X to nine X adjustable, right? With a built-in tack fire red dot sight on it. Very cool. Uh, it was cheap. It was on sale. I think it was like $195 retail, and then it was on sale for $85. If this does the job of a red dot sight and a separate three times magnifier, I'm all for it. Because sometimes when you have two of those scopes on there, right, you take a lot of room on your Picatinny rail there that you can't even put a rear uh, backup iron on there. And that's been the case for my other two uh, rifles that I own is that I have a separate red dot sight and a three times magnifier flipped to the side on it, but it leaves you almost no room for the rear iron sights. Even if you do have room for it, right? Sometimes those sights are made so wide that you can barely get your fingers around the charging handle, you know? So I figured I'd try this, you know what I mean? Uh, it may not be a top quality uh, rifle scope, but uh, honestly, <clears throat> if it helps me see the target better, I'm all for it, you know? So uh, there's a battery that comes with it and um, an Allen key. And I'm just gonna show you quickly what it is. I'm not gonna mount it because, well, I guess I could go mount it on my uh, PSA, you know, for Metal State Arms. So it's got a, it's got the bikini uh, covers, right, for the two front and rear lens, and it's got this top cover that covers the. Uh, oh, that's interesting. That's pretty cool. It has a quick disconnect lever, you know, for your uh, for the Picatinny rail, which is cool. But you know, once you zero this in, you really shouldn't take it off and on. You know what I mean? So I just installed the battery for the uh, rifle scope itself. And now I'm taking apart the top uh, red dot sight and I'm installing the batteries for that. So uh, to, you actually need two batteries. So they gave you four, which is very cool. You know what I mean? Uh, here's the quick disconnect. Here's the windage and elevation. On the top here, you have the um, red dot sight. And over here in this compartment, it takes a uh, CR2032, CR2032, you know, that flat battery, like a size of a quarter. You put that in there. Now, you also have to put one for the uh, red dot sight. 
And for that, it was kind of a pain in the butt. I had to use an Allen key, they provided it, and take two of these little bolts off, the hex bolts, take them off. This part comes off, and then on the bottom, you shove in the battery and put it back on again. So obviously, it's not zeroed in, you know what I mean? Uh, but I was testing out this scope, looking at my uh, neighborhood here with the scope at three times and at nine times. Honestly, <laughs> I... I wish I would have gotten something like this instead of a separate red dot sight and a three times magnifier, you know, because that takes up everything on the top of your, your rail there, whereas this one's all in one. Uh, I'm going to show you what it looks like. Okay, so I've, I've got you here looking out my garage, and there's an on and off switch right there. Turn it on, and there you can see the red dot. Can you guys see that red dot? It's hard to see on the uh, GoPro. You see it on the grass right there? So that's that, right? And then, this is going to be tough to see. I'm going to turn this on, and it comes in either blue. Oh, you can see it. Blue. Or green. Not cool? That is cool. Uh, the eye relief is actually pretty good. I have astigmatism, so uh, my eyeball is practically right in the, uh, <laughs> right at this part here. And if uh, it has a lot of kickback, there you go, black eye. But uh, this one's actually really good. I'm, I'm actually like uh, three inches away, but then, then again, this is the camera, you know what I mean? So I'm going to, um, I'm going to go closer now. Bear with me, guys. It's tough to do when you're filming with a camera, you know? There you go, see? And now I'm turning it. That was three, the first one. Now this is nine. There's my logo on my fender. Sorry about the movement, but it gives you an idea. You know what I mean? Awesome. I think that's awesome. I wish I would have got this before, you know? So, yeah. I mean, look. I understand it's NC Star. You know, it's not like the top of the line. Not even close. You know, it may not even be middle of the line, but the quality feels good and it's very clear at nine times and at three times and in between. And uh, I like the red dot sight, you know, where, you know, it takes a little bit of getting used to because the screen is so small, but you don't have to put your eye close to it. You know what I'm saying? You can see it. So, I mean, I really like it, even the way it looks, you know, uh, and it feels good. And I like that they gave you four batteries for it, which is good. And I also have a UTG Leapers 3 times magnifier. That was like uh, $69 or something like that. And that works fine, the flip to the side 3 times magnifier. I have a Vortex um, uh, flip to the side 3 times magnifier also. That's nice too, but that retails like $200, you know. I bought it off my friend, who shall remain nameless, uh, for $150, you know. Um, and also I have the Smith & Wesson red dot side too. So, you know, all those optics, you know, it adds up, you know. To get a decent one, you're you're looking at two three hundred dollars just for the set red dot side and three times magnifier. Eighty five dollars, baby! You got best of both worlds right here, and I think it's really cool. So uh, I'll let you know when I mount this on my uh, my upper. You know what I mean? So that that's the review there for the uh, the optic, which is very cool. I'm very excited about the optic. Um, and yes, we got the hex mag too. But it looks like we have another box from Optics Planet, and this feels hefty. You know, like it's got a lot of shit in it, you know what I mean? I'm going to open this one up now, too. Right in front of you. So a good, a good set of the, the build is coming in slowly by mail, you know? And uh, again, like this and the mags. I mean, yeah, you need mags, but I mean, you know, if you wanted to make a budget build, super a budget build, you wouldn't be getting four of them, you know what I mean? Uh, you want to try to save money, but... You need them. Uh, anyway, okay, so in the box, we have one, two, well, we got six max. I ordered three for my friend. Uh, he, he wanted me to order for him. So I've got three of my own um, ODG green hex max. And uh, I won't show you what he ordered. Oh, hell, I'm just going to show you what he ordered. Shh, don't 
Don't tell him. Um, three black P mags by Magpul. Ten rounders. What else did I get? That's right, I got a fake suppressor. Here in New York State, you have to be New York State compliant. We are the most restrictive state in the nation. But look, guys like us, we're not gonna let the restrictions stop us, right? You can make fun of our ridiculous stock and grips and all that stuff, but that's okay. At least we're armed, right? You gotta give us credit for that. At least we're armed. And look, my gun can look just as cool as your gun, right? But I'd have to pin my mag. No way are you getting me to pin my mag. So I gotta make my gun look a little futuristic. Thorts in stock, um, detachable mag. I don't have a crazy pistol grip, nor do I have a removable, uh, movable stock, nor do I have any foregrips or angle grips, right? As for my barrel, yes. My PSA upper is a threaded barrel, which is illegal. It is 16 inches, which uh, makes it legal as a rifle, right? Not a pistol. But uh, to remedy the threaded barrel restriction for New York State, you have to put a thread protector on the thread, then pin and weld it so that it can't come off. I could do that. I have done that. But what's even better? to make your gun at least look cool. This is a fake barrel suppressor, uh, a fake, yeah, barrel suppressor, okay? It does nothing. It just looks like a real suppressor, but in reality, it's just a solid piece of metal <laughs> or aluminum. Anyway, it's reverse threaded, okay? So what I mean by reverse threaded is the threads are here in the front. So if the barrel's here, it's not like a regular silencer where you thread it on here. You actually put the thing completely through the barrel and the threads are here. So you would put it on like that. So basically what you're just doing is you're not extending the barrel. You're just making it look cool. <laughs> That's it. It has these words on it. 556 five, NATO, you know. Uh, anyway, so these were going for like 40 something bucks uh, for a while, but they've recently been on sale because a lot of manufacturers are making barrel shrouds. I checked. They're, they do nothing, so they're completely legal to put on. It's, it's only to make it look cool. Makes your 16-inch uh, rifle look like an SBR with a silencer on it. You know, that's all it is. Um, it does absolutely nothing because it's solid. See? So to make this even more uh, New York State compliant, once you do screw it on the uh, threaded barrel, right, it acts like a thread protector, right? And um, you would have to get a gunsmith to drill a hole all the way through with maybe a third into your barrel. I know it sounds a little crazy, but we do crazy things here in New York to make our guns look cool and stay in compliance. You put a pin through it, right? Then you tack weld the end to assure any New York State trooper or ATF agent that may want to inspect your rifle at a range or something like that and then they could say, see it and say, okay, well, this guy's not removing it and putting something else on the thread. It's permanent on there, you know what I mean? So anyway, this is only to make it look cool, uh, which I have on my uh, Smith & Wesson M&P 1522 blinker, and it looks bad ass. Uh, but you guys in free states, you can continue to make fun of us New Yorkers or Californians or Massachusetts guys. Connecticut, New Jersey, but look, we live here. This is where we grew up. It is what it is. I'm not going to move to a state because you can get better guns. You know what I mean? Families are here. Friends are here. So you never know, though. I might move down to North Carolina <laughs> and then go crazy. You know what I mean? But uh, anyway, that that's my uh, video for today. It's part three of my AR-15 budget build, even though it's really gone over my budget. I was gonna do it for less than 500 bucks, but like I said, I'm up to uh, 840 now, but because I'm getting all kinds of shit, you know what I'm saying? Technically the rifle could be built for $400, but I want cool shit. Anyway, thanks a lot for joining me on uh, this episode. I have uh, 
parts lists and uh, links to fantastic uh, websites that sell these great parts. Like when I get my Aero Precision M4E1 lower receiver, you can check out Aero Precision, uh, Gun Mag Warehouse, Brownells. All the links are in the description of every one of my videos. Uh, if you click them and look through it and if you buy anything, I might make uh, a little commission here and there. So I appreciate it. Thank you very much. If you guys are into small engines, be sure to check out my other channel, Mowers and Blowers. The link is in the description, or you can go to mowersandblowers.com. Thanks a lot for joining me, guys. We'll see you guys next time on Mowers, Blowers, and Guns. So you boys from Arkansas, huh? Well... Hey y'all, it's Kylie here, and we'll see you next time on Mowers and Blowers. Hey, I'm Henry from Mowers and Blowers. As a YouTuber that deals with small engine equipment on a daily basis, I worry about the harmful effects of the 10% ethanol that's in your unleaded gas from your gas station. Here on the East Coast, as winter nears, I think about storing my summer lawn equipment for the winter. Ethanol absorbs moisture and what it does is it could rust or corrode and clog up your jets in your carburetor. That's why I use Ethanol Safeguard with stabilizers from my friends over at Lucas Oil Products. Before you store your machines, a little bit of Lucas goes a long way. When you're ready to use your machines again, Fire Shout out to my little friend!